everybody, we are coming at you with a new, new video from a brand new place, a park that I've never covered before, a haunt I've never covered before, Hollow Scream Orlando. Tonight is opening night of Hollow Scream. We got 500 houses, seven scare zones, three shows, and I was actually invited uh, as a plus one for with my buddy Lost TV as media for Hollow Scream Orlando. So we're gonna get to go inside the houses and get first seeing for all the shows and things of that nature. Ooh. And yeah, we're just gonna see what Hollow Scream Orlando is all about. I've never been to this event before, so I'm really excited to check it out. It's my first ever time doing it. I'm not sure how well you can hear me because the music back here, not really a great place to film an intro, but anyways, let's just hop into the event and see what's happening here because there's a lot going on. And very interesting, they actually have some pins of past houses. I know Siren of the Seas, I believe, was here last year. They have some more down here from past houses, like Blood Beckoning, which is actually back this year and uh, Dead Vines, the original Dead Vines. It's actually really cool. I really like the idea of these pins and sort of referencing all the past stuff. Also, they are going with this sort of like painted skull motif and they have it on a pin and I think this is actually pretty cool. Really like this pin here. It's actually really big too. For 15, a pin of this size, not bad. And shout out to Lost TV. We have the back of the Hollow Scream House shirt. So all the houses here in the Sauna House design. I know they have a similar one for Tampa, but really, really cool. And the front just kind of has the uh, Hollow Scream logo right there. So really cool, really nice uh, sort of design. It's different, neat colors. I'm a fan. And if you don't wish to be scared in the scare zones, you can buy a Nobu necklace, this little spider, spider buddy right here. Really like this, only $15. It's cute, cute little design here. If you want a Nobu necklace for Hollow Scream. And you can get for $20, if you spend 25 or more, you get this skull blanket with that same sort of painted skull design. Really like it. Uh, nice throws, looks very comfortable. Definitely a good souvenir if you're spending 25 at a participating location. And right at the front we have something really, really cool. I love this. It is a Howl Scream baseball jersey. We got skull on the side and then on the back it says 31. Really, really dig this. It's very unique. Not something you really see too often and I've been seeing some people wearing them around the park and I'm jealous. I might have to get myself one. All right, we're entering through the pipeline area. Here's the pipeline track right here and we have a clown? Is this for the Carnival Pier? I know it's the scare zone over here. Very interesting that they have that just right off the bat. Oh, I'm so excited. This looks actually kind of kind of cool. All right, and here we have a little bit of a preview of some of the food. We have the beef video <laughs> soup, scratch blood bag, bloody ribs. This is kind of interesting. Ooh, country fried pork belly. That is very exciting. And the ofrenda here. So nice little table with some food on there. All right, so just after we got into the park, they gave us like this little section outside of Pipeline, and we got to try some of the Hollow Scream food. I started with the zombie taco, and that was actually really, really good. Um, pretty surprising. I wasn't really expecting it. I'm just not a big fan of a lot of those flavors, but it really, really worked for me. And then we moved from there to the uh, cheesy mac, which I thought was my favorite thing we tried. Um, they had these like mac and cheese bites on the top, which I thought were really, really good, mixed with the mac and cheese, and had a little bit of pico on there as well. Really, really solid. And finally, just as they were about to close, I tried a little bit of the teriyaki hibachi which was also pretty good everything was really really tasty here and if this is just a sample of what we're gonna get as far as food at Hollow Scream I'm pretty excited because there's a lot of good good items we have this year so I think we're gonna do some houses in a bit really really great way to start off the night and just as we're leaving this pipeline area they have a little bar here called Carnival Curiosities you see some clown heads back there and they're making some of the drinks right here lots of really highly themed bars at Hollow Scream, that's like something they're really known for. So exciting to see something like this right here. Just outside Frozen Terror, we actually have the Hello Scream Orlando store where you can get a lot of the merchandise I showed earlier in the video. So pretty cool they have like their own dedicated store over here uh, where the old Wild Arctic gift shop was. This is where this gift shop used to be for the ride, which is actually pretty neat. All right, moved from Frozen Terror. Now we're gonna go into Beneath the Ice Meltdown. Excited for this one because this one's in the Wild Arctic queue. So I am beyond pumped to see what this has in store. My first ever Hello Scream house. Let's do this. Oh, I'm not going to trust it. 
There was a double scare. I left it in there, even though you couldn't really see anything, that got everyone. Yeah, everybody that's in our group got got by that one. So really scary, but gets the adrenaline pumping. Woo. I packed a punch. And here just outside Wild Arctic, we have Tormented, which is another bar. And uh, they have these really cool statues that they have photo ops for. All right, moving from beneath the ice to toxic turmoil, another scare zone. So we have some already interesting things over here. So let's see what this scare zone has to offer. A safe zone, okay? HR's done. It's spreading there's nothing we can do. Don't touch anything. Run it in the trees! Don't let them touch you! He's coming! This is dope. Oh, whoa. There's been a breach in this area. Please stay where you are. Hold your breath! Okay. <laughs> All right, we're moving from Toxic Terminal into our next haunted house, Captain's Revenge, Drowned in Darkness. This is a returning house uh, from the past. I have no experience with this one, so it doesn't matter if it's returning or not for me, but excited to see this one. I think this is a pirate-themed house, so I like pirates. And right outside Captain's Revenge, we have a little skeleton here. You got the red glowing eyes, gold mouth. Very exciting, excited to find some sunken treasure or something. Let, let's go do the house now. Oh! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what a start. Wow. <laughs> Okay, we just got out of Captain's Revenge, Drowned in Darkness, I believe that's what it's called. 
What a fantastic house. So apparently, as I mentioned in the video, you actually go inside of the outside, like where you would exit normally, you go inside of. And the facade, the original facade is the exit. So it's completely different than past years. From what I imagine, again, I don't know. I don't have any real frame of reference because I have not been in past years, but that was really fun. Really great pirate, you know, scares, lots of great like interactions. And I hope the video came out a little better um, because I did film it on my phone. Um, I get to see a little more than you did over in Beneath the Ice. So I might do Beneath the Ice again to try to get a better walkthrough for you all, but good time. I kind of like this one a little better than Beneath the Ice, although I like the location better in the other one. But overall, pretty good time so far. I'm having a really, really good time with Hollow Scream Houses. All right, moving right along from Captain's Revenge, we're headed to Dead Vines, Nolan's Nightmare. This is a, I guess a New Orleans themed overlay to Dead Vines, which is a house in the past. I'm excited to see this take, even though this will be my first time in the Dead Vines. This one seems like it might be a little scary, so I'll let you know when we go through it. like a mausoleum. Okay, we parked it inside the Poison Grotto bar. Really, really cool themed bar here. But Dead Vines, Nolan's Nightmare? Oh, wow. That was actually really, really cool. Some fantastic effects, some great scares. Wasn't super long, but I think it had a lot of amazing quality to it. You went outside, you went to Bourbon Street. It really lived up to the theming, and uh, that aspect of it was absolutely incredible. That's been my favorite so far. Each one has gotten better. So I hope maybe we can keep that train going, but I'm not sure. That's like a really, really cool house. Um, just, just wow. Anyway, on to the next. All right, and straight from Dead Vines, we have Witchcraft Bayou. Yep, lighting provided by Losh. Headed into Witchcraft Bayou, the scare zone. Shout out to Infinity Falls, which looks absolutely gorgeous right now. Too bad it's not open for night rides, but this rock work right here, absolute perfection, absolutely mint. It's so fantastic. And this whole little area here is actually really nice over here where the Waterway Grill and the Poison Grotto that we were in earlier. Really, really nice area to just kind of decompress, to chill. It's really quiet back here. And you do come out right of uh, Dead Vines, right over here, um, off to my right hand side. So. You can see a little bit of this haunted house as you're just chilling out here. All right, heading into Terrors of the Deep. It's like kind of Atlantis style scare zone. I don't know, it's kind of like Atlantis. Let's see. Look at you all. <laughs> Bunch of buffoons, all of you. Lots 
lots of actors in here. Ooh. Okay, just got out of Terrors of the Deep. That's one of my favorite scare zones so far. There's not a lot of light in here, but I'm right in front of this lit sign. And uh, yeah, really cool pirate themed here scare zone. I thought this was an Atlantis theme zone, but I guess it's a pirate theme zone. But still very cool, very fun. Lots of room for the characters to kind of roam around. I like it, lots of story, story. That's what I really wanted from the scare zone and I got it. So really, really excited. Not sure where we're going next. I know we got to do a couple more houses and stuff. I'm having fun just roaming the scare zones and seeing, uh, kind of getting the interaction. So. Yeah, let's just move forward and see what happens next. So right here we have the Bloodlight District in the old Seaport Theater. So I think this is like a scare zone or something? I don't know. We're gonna have to go in and see what this is all about. I think this is brand new for this year and it looks really intriguing. So let's wait no longer and see what's actually inside of here. Okay, so actually around the Bloodlight District is the entrance to Blood Beckoning, which is uh, Scratch's house, one of the icons for this event. So uh, we're gonna head in there and see, this is a returning house from last year. Can't really see the sign um, because it is, again, really dark, but exciting to see this house. This is house number four of five that we have done so far. So we'll have to see what Scratch has in store for us. I like bookstores. You know, I'm a big bookstore guy. I wonder what kind of titles they got on the show. Okay. Blood Beckoning, uh, really, really cool house. My phone actually ran out of storage as we were traveling through the house itself, but really great to see Scratch. He had a great little final room there. Again, I was trying to get it on camera. Didn't really work out, but really, really fun time. It's kind of confusing. I didn't really get the whole story of it because you enter the bookstore and then you're kind of in a freezer and then you're meeting Scratch. I don't know, but it was definitely a good time nonetheless. And uh, yeah, another good house for the lineup. Probably my least favorite so far. But, you know, still a good time. Still really enjoyed it. And I can see why this character and these sort of siren characters are really, really popular uh, for the SeaWorld Howl Scream event. You can stay and play all you want. You can look, but you can't touch.
All right, there's the Bloodlight District that we just came out of. Really cool, really neat. Sorry for the epic music behind me. Really cool, really neat. Kind of a unique scare zone. It's not really like inside of a street. It's not inside of the theater. It's like in the queue for the theater. You saw, we just kind of like wrapped around the side there, which is really neat. I hope they flesh that out some more in future years. Stretch going you did depends on how much you can do. All right, so we just got out of Carnival Pier and we're down here at Pipeline, right at this spot, right on the bottom. Absolutely beautiful looking at night right here. All right, ending with house number one, a brand new one, Delirium 666 Laboratories. Why did I say it like that? Let's hop into this house and see what is going on here. It's gonna be all of our first time, so that's really, really exciting. delirium 666 really cool time i like sort of the split beforehand where you're kind of going through the house and you get split up into two parties in the middle really really neat liked a lot of the creatures like that lighting it's the, a lot of like black light effects and stuff like that really really cool fun concept it is something new i wonder how this might evolve in years to come but yeah overall pretty fun time one that i wasn't really expecting to be anything super cool but actually kind of surprised me i did have a lot of fun in that one not super scary for me at least, but we're a great scenic. I feel like it's more of a scenic than a scary house, if that makes any sense. But I love that we're dumped right back out into the main scare zone that we started out with. All right, and I think we're gonna end the night right here. Thank you all for watching this video. I know it's different. I know it's not HHN, not really HHN related, but Hollow Scream is actually a really fun haunt. I had a really great time, my first time at Hollow Scream, trying to put myself in focus. I really liked the Delirium house a lot. That was a really fun one, Beneath the Ice 
and Dead Vines. Those are probably my three favorites. And as far as scare zones go, uh, Carnival Pier, which is the one over by Pipeline, the one that we started out with the media event, and Terror of the Deep, the pirate scare zone. Really, really cool. I like those two the most. We didn't hit any of the shows, unfortunately, but that's okay. You know, we were more focused on getting the haunted houses and scare zones done. Um, so I hope you understand. No show coverage in this video, um, but I hope you enjoyed my POVs inside of the houses because it's my first ever time filming inside of a haunted house, so I was a bit nervous about it. But I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to give a big shout out to, of course, Mr. Lash TV. Go subscribe to him in the description below. He was so gracious enough to invite me out to the media event, um, which was amazing. So thank you, thank you, Lash, and uh, thank you to SeaWorld for inviting both of us out to media event. So. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Again, thank you for watching this video. And, uh, of course, we'll see you all in the next one, which is probably going to be HHN related. Anyways, have a good one. And, uh, of course, take care, everybody.